In the Master Influencer Bootcamp for Women, we spend a lot of time talking about perceptions and credibility. We also discuss how the process and presentation are even more important than the message's content, which can account for about 6 to 10% of what people pay attention to. This discussion cannot be complete without talking about how looks and fashion style affect these kinds of impressions and perceptions. This is not a really easy message for me to deliver, as I believe we should look at each person's competences and judge her based on her skills and attitude rather than her looks. Unfortunately, as humans, we are wired to make quick judgments based on deeply embedded cultural norms. We judge competence based on looks, and for women, the expectations are even higher than they are for men. Just a small disclaimer, I'm not a fashion expert, but after 10 years of working in different professional environments, I learned a few tips I would like to share with you to help you position yourself as a polished professional. Whether we like it or not, looks matter. The Atlantic article titled The Makeup Tax details various research studies of how looks impact perceptions of competence and drive likability. Some of the highlights of these studies are the following. Good-looking people do get ahead, especially in business. And for women, makeup factors into this judgment, something that is not expected of men. Makeup works by enhancing facial contrast. The color difference between your lips and your nose, for example, Facial contrast is closely associated with femininity and femininity with female beauty in Western cultures. Makeup, in short, is a norm and nothing ruins a first impression like a norm violation. Research shows that subtle makeup makes women seem more competent, likable, and attractive. I know that, again, this may sound superficial and especially unfair, and you can try to fight society norms and beauty standards, but this is outside the scope of this discussion. Looking at the half glass full, you can try to explore these norms to your advantage. Let's look at this specific example. On the left, you can see me without makeup on a personal trip. On the right, I'm wearing some makeup, my hair looks more styled, and I'm dressed in professional clothing. Looking at the photos for just a few seconds, who would you hire to assist you with solving business problems? I have to report to you that perhaps it's a strange coincidence, but once I replace the photo on the left in my LinkedIn profile and website with the photo on the right, I started getting more traffic and more business opportunities. So just a small touch can make a huge difference in people's perceptions. Let's do another example. So on the below two images are from two videos I recorded for my YouTube channel. The difference between the right and the left one is 15 minutes of wardrobe change, quick makeup, and a simple blow dry. And voila, I don't look so tired and casual, but perhaps I look like a woman ready to share some important advice with you. It's not just the viewer's perception, it's my perception of myself. When I look well put together, I feel better. I feel more professional. One key question that many women face in the workplace, especially in male-dominated industries, is should I stand out or should I blend in? I started my career on Wall Street, one of the more conservative and status-driven industries in terms of dress code and accessories. I had to wear suits to work every day, pay attention to the length of my skirts, the colors and patterns of my outfits, and the height of my heels. In banking, especially as a junior woman, I really didn't want to draw the extra attention to me by dressing outside the common rules and not be taken seriously because of this. And I've seen other women to whom this had happened. I find this really annoying, but since then I have adapted a professional dress code that is more towards the conservative style. Living for three years in Brazil, I added more bright colors and patterns to my wardrobe, which complemented my complexion much more. As you can see, I'm quite pale, so the grays and the blacks don't always 
bring out the best in my appearance. I also stood out because most women in my office tended to dress more casually. I was standing out as a foreigner in any case, so I saw this as somewhat of an advantage. And as a very young manager, I wanted to show that I meant business. When I later moved to San Francisco to consult a startup, things completely reversed. Everyone just wore hoodies and jeans all the time. I was again the outsider, and in this particular case, I didn't want to stand out. I never fully converted to the casual style, and in my mind, also very boring one. But I did buy a hoodie. I dressed very simple and monochrome but I wore colorful scarves to maintain my individuality somehow. Now, as an entrepreneur, I wear many identities. Sometimes I go to networking events with more con corporate people, so I wear conservative clothes. When I network with entrepreneurs, I go more casual. Sometimes I want to attract attention, especially when giving a talk or trying to meet potential clients. So I dress more interesting in terms of style and colors. Other times, especially when I go to mostly male events, I want to make sure that I don't draw the wrong kind of attention, so I stick to more conservative dress code and wear mostly black. I want to share with you several makeup and dress code tips that work for most situations, especially if you're working within corporate settings. Just look at these as recommendations and you can apply whatever makes the most sense to you, your style, your work environment. So makeup is kind of hard to figure out and I cringe sometimes thinking or seeing the photos from my younger years when I was wearing ridiculous and vulgar eyeshadows or maybe too much blush. My advice to you Go to the Mac store and ask them for some tips on clean professional looks that would work with your skin tones and hair and eye color. All of us have some strong feature we accentuate with makeup. And I personally didn't even know until my friend who is a makeup artist told me that mine are my eyes. So I kind of pay more attention to my eye makeup these days. Elegant chic clean lines and colors look appropriate for most situations. My favorite brands these days are Banana Republic, Mademoiselle La Fleur, and BCBG for whenever I want to have some special pieces and they're especially good for blazers. Zara and Mango in Europe have some good options as well. It's hard to mix and match bags, shoes and outfits, so the easiest way is to stick to neutral colors in bags and shoes because they end up matching almost everything. Jewelry is also somewhat hard to match to every outfit, so unless you have a really refined taste and ability to match well, select pieces that are clean and simple in silver or gold, mixing pearls and clear stones. Use one piece in your outfit to stand out and make a statement about your style or personality. This is your opportunity to show some creativity. It can be a colorful shoe, bag, belt, scarf, or a patterned item. But be careful because too much can make you look cheap and not well put together. Finally, do your homework about dress code. When I worked in mining, I went to visit one of our mines in Brazil and spent a bunch of time trying to explain to the security guard that I'm a company employee, even though I'm not wearing the green uniform. Everyone in operations wore uniforms, so not only my clothes were not practical, but I also made myself unnecessarily stand out as the girl from corporate, and therefore had to work extra hard to build trust and rapport. So don't make